Hi, my name is Elina Kuosmanen. I am from the Center for Ubiquitous Computing from the University of Oulu in Finland. I will introduce our study on measuring Parkinson's disease on smartphones with drawing tasks. Spiral drawing has been utilized for years as a clinical tool to observe tremors and other abnormal movements in the assessment of different movement disorders, such as Parkinson's disease. It is conducted usually on pen and paper and analyzed visually by a trained clinician. Hence, it's not utilized that often. We wanted to see if this could be conducted digitally using a smartphone, since smartphones are ubiquitous also among elderly. There has been attempts to digitize the spiral drawing on a tablet before using a stylus. We decided to conduct drawings with the finger to make the assessment available without extra equipment. We developed two drawing tasks. First, the spiral task resembling the traditional task. However, when using the finger to draw, the line is hidden under the finger, making, draw making the drawing more difficult. So to minimize the effect of finger occlusion, we created another task, a square drawing. The square shape is more predictable and familiar, hence easier to conduct with the finger. Next, I will introduce the application we developed for the drawing tasks. Here you can see the spiral drawing task flow. First, the user sees the instructions. The spiral drawing is started from the center of the spiral. The drawing is made according to the given template and when ready, user clicks done. The arrow is calculated as an average of the distances between the drawn line and the template line in each user drawn dot. In result view, the app provides the arrow, maximum arrow, standard deviation of the arrow and drawing time. The square task is conducted in a similar way. The square drawing is started from the bottom left corner. After clicking done, the app provides the same metrics as in spiral drawing. We conducted a user study with Parkinson's disease patients. The drawing tasks were tested by 14 best subjects in the local Parkinson's Association meeting. In the meeting, we introduced the study and collected consents. Most of the Parkinson's disease patients come there with their spouses, so we were able to recruit an age matching control group. We got eight participants with Parkinson's with mean age of 71.5 years, four males and four females, and six controls without Parkinson's with mean age of 72.3 years two males and four females. We refer to these groups as PD and non-PD. All participants conducted three spiral drawings and three square drawings using the same device. We recorded the touch coordinates with the timestamps and the screen captures of the final drawings. We analyzed following metrics on, from the data, drawing speed and total drawing time, Drawing speed is measured in pixels per millisecond. We counted the average speed of, of a drawing and also a pointwise speed during the task. Drawing accuracy, the arrow is calculated in pixels as the average of the distance of the drawing from the template in each drawn dot. The crossing rate is the number of occurrences where the drawing line crosses the template line divided by the total number of drawn dots. Radial and angular velocity are counted only for the spiral task. Radial velocity describes how much the radius of the spiral increases in pixels per millisecond and the angular velocity how much the spiral angle changes in radians per millisecond. We also studied the drawing sampling rate. Parkinson's disease might cause finger jumping on the screen causing deviations in the touch screen sampling and gaps in the drawing. We found out that the group with the Parkinson's disease had longer drawing time and slower drawing speed. On average, drawing time and speed are longer in both spiral and square tasks. 
and in spiral, the average radial velocity and average angular velocity are lower. The Parkinson's disease group's drawing speed varies more during one task, while drawing speed of non-PD is more constant. Uh, the differences in drawing speed and time are not statistically significant in our study, as it was in previous studies with the tablet. Since we are using a smartphone instead of tablet, we have a smaller screen size and hence smaller drawing estate and shorter drawing task. It might be the reason why the difference was not statistically significant with this sample size. In spiral drawing, average crossing rate of the group without Parkinson's was bigger and the average error was lower. This means that the non-PD spirals were more compliant with the template. In square drawing, average crossing rate of the group with Parkinson's was bigger and the average error was also higher. We can say that the non-PD drew closer to the template with straighter lines. And 16% of spirals and 16% of squares had gaps in the group with Parkinson's and none of the spirals and 11% of squares had gaps in the group without Parkinson's. There were some un unexpected things during the study. Some participants drew the square intentionally line by line, explaining the big amount of gaps in previous slide also for the group without Parkinson's in the square drawing. There were things challenging the error calculation. Another finger hit in the screen accidentally causes sharp straight lines and a big error rate. See PD5 spiral on the slide. Some drew extra rounds in the beginning or in the end of the spiral, like PD7 and non-PD1 spirals on the slide. Extra round in the beginning mixes the error calculation that utilizes the angle in finding the closest dot of the tem template. Some participants made corrections to the drawings by drawing another line closer to the template, as in the square on the slide. We asked feedback after the task. Generally, the feedback from participants with Parkinson's disease was positive. Half of them described the tasks as easy, but none of the group, none of the other group used that word. The participants without Parkinson's told that the tasks were surprisingly hard and challenging. In future, we want to understand which Parkinson's disease symptoms affect the most the drawing performance. We will investigate whether we can detect and measure the medication effectiveness and lasting effect. We are planning to add additional tasks to assess reaction and memory decline and evaluate data and tool for clinical support for managing Parkinson's disease. Uh, we want to thank the Parkinson's Association of Northern Finland, local section of Oulu, where we could conduct the user study. And feel free to contact me or get familiar with our project or our research group via the websites. Thank you.